This is Speaking with the Enemy. Speaking with the Enemy, if you know that music, it can only mean one thing. It means we are back for another year on the Ticats Audio Network. Louis B. And uh, speaking with the Enemy with public enemy number one, the team. Not my guest, because uh, the, the guest on the other end is uh, my buddy, Nate Ajay. It's on the broadcast of the Toronto Argo, or Toronto Argonauts. I'm, I'm so fit with rage, I can't even say the name, because we get to see you so many times, Nate. Five times, including this preseason game on Friday. Yeah, man. And, you know, it's almost a repeat of last year, where, you know, it felt like every week I was getting the a text or DM from you is like, hey, man, come on speaking with the enemy. And we spoke so much last year. I was like, I, there's no way I can still be the enemy. And, you know, by the end of the year, you gave me a pass. But it's great to get back on, man. It just means we have football season going. And I love this time of year. How motivated are the Argos considering the way last year ended? East Division champs in the regular season, but couldn't get it done against the Ticats. It's, that's got to be in the back of their mind. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you know, when you go through a season like that, it was kind of a surprise season where, you know, we didn't think we were going to be number one in the East, right? Best record in the East. We, we knew we had a good team and, you know, a lot of moving parts coming together all at once, but it came together pretty quickly and ended up being, you know, one of the top teams in the East. Then, then the expectations ratchet up and you start thinking about great cup and win the East. And I, I think the guys, you know, going through what they went through last year, they're like, okay, there, there's there's levels to this, right? You don't just go from, you know, three wins a year before to, you know, now you're great in, in the great cup. You got to go through the process and trust the process. So the guys are really motivated, you know, to get this year rolling. You know, it starts at the top of McLeod Bethel Thompson. He's got a sour taste in his mouth from, you know, last year and everything he's done up until this point in training camp, the way he talks, the way he leads, the way he communicates with everyone, it's, it's for a great cup. So, you know, when you have that messaging from the top, then you have a guy like Andrew Harris, who's a back-to-back great cup champion, who knows how to get it done. The guys really have, you know, people to look at uh, in, in terms of people that have been there to uh, aspire to be like. So, and then you got a guy like Shagir Davis, who's been in the past five great cups, yeah. right? And you know him very well. And, you know, he's bringing that experience and that level of get us over the hump type of mentality. So, you know, all the p- pieces are fitting at the right time. They've gone through their lumps. Now it's about getting to that next level. And, you know, a great cup is, you know, it's either great cup or bust for these guys. That's how they're looking at it. Wow. And for, you know, Ryan Dinwiddie, he's only in his second full year uh, going into it. Well, his first full year, because 14 yeah. game schedule versus an 18 game schedule. What was your impression of Dinwiddie last year? And how are you expecting him to grow as a head coach in year two? I thought as a rookie coach coming into your first ever head coaching experience, he did a good job. Uh, there were times where he could have uh, handled situations better. I look at BC at the end of that game where you know, he just mismanaged the time, but he was a rookie coach dealing with a lot. And I think under all the circumstances, COVID year, you know, first year being a rookie coach, uh, he did a good job. Now, even for him, it's time to take it to another level. I mean, you look at, you know, you grade on this scale, like you're a rookie coach in your first year, you're first in the East, you make the playoffs after the team hadn't made the playoffs in you know, the previous three, four years. Uh, you, you're doing a pretty good job, you know. So, you know, all in all, he did, a, he did a good job. He connected with the players extremely well, which is very much appreciated coming from the player side. You know, when you have a coach that comes in, takes input, connects with guys, the guys trust and, and believe what he says, uh, that, that's huge. So he, he, he checked off a bunch of uh, check marks and, uh, and, and, and points that, you know, you really need to see as, you know, a rookie coach and to see that, uh, to know that he's going to have uh, success going forward. So now it's all about him building on his scheme. Now teams have had a whole year of scouting his offensive scheme. Now it's about him putting wrinkles in there where they can't, you know, sit on stuff so much and understand exactly what he's doing. Uh, even in terms of clock management and things like that, he's had a whole year where he's seen every single situation. Now he can refine those things and it'd be even better. You know, you know, some of the best coaches like we know, like in the NFL, Andy Reid, he's had moments where, you know, things weren't so, you know, dialed in, right? And, you know, had taken those lumps, made him a better coach. So I think Coach Dinwiddie's going to have a great uh, second season. 
the Andy Reid School of Clock Management uh, is something <laughs> everybody uh, who's in the football world and you know, the tight cats had that too with June Jones a, a yeah. few years ago, getting to to learn the the nuances, especially as the head coach. It's one thing to to watch another coach do it; it's another to to yes. be the one in charge of it, to be the one in uh, throwing the challenge flag or you know asking for the review. It's a, it's it's very different. Uh, you mentioned McLeod Bethel Thompson. You mentioned what he's been able to do as a leader, but there's another quarterback that's chomping at his heels. I'm sure Chad Kelly has been saying all the right things and apparently been doing all the right things on the field. As Dinwiddie says, he pushed Antonio Pipkin out of that number two role. And I know Pipkin picked up quickly in BC, but what are you expecting to see from Chad Kelly? I, I know there's a lot of buzz around him, but uh, he is just a, a rookie coming into this league. Absolutely. And we know the history behind rookie quarterbacks coming in with, you know, big time pedigree, big time names and how they do in the CFL. But Chad, I, I think he's got what it takes to succeed in this league. He's got the right mindset. He's gone through some ups and downs um and to get to this point and it's kind of matured him so he's at a different point in his life where you know football it's either make it or break it at this point right there's no other chances there's no other leagues you can go to kind of rebuild your name this is kind of it for him and he's taking it as serious as you can you you obviously know for him to go to a school like Ole Miss and you know put up the numbers he he did and get opportunities in the NFL but he's got the talent it's never been about the talent for for uh, Chad Kelly but it's about what's up here. And I think from talking to the guys on the team, they all agree that he's taking this opportunity and, and, and really running with it. Um, you know, being, you know, first one in, uh, asking McLeod for extra, you know, help with understanding things like the waggle. He was up in Toronto uh, many months before the season, getting with the guys, throwing with the guys. So he's fully bought in uh, to Tor the Toronto Argonaut football. I uh, expect big things from him. But now, for that now, it's McLeod Bethel Thompson's team. It's his team going forward, and it's going to be to his team for a while because just like what uh, Chad Kelly is going to be going through, McLeod went through his lumps, and he's earned this opportunity to have a long leash and not to be looking over his shoulder. So I expect McLeod Beth Thompson to have a great year, all-star caliber year, because this is his first ever opportunity to be the guy from number from day one. And uh, I think he's going to do a great job. He's already, you know, the the vocal leader in that locker room. He's already the guy that you know other guys look up to. Uh, he was doing all that stuff before, but it's different mm -hmm. when your name is first on that depth chart, right? Guys uh, notice those kind of, kind, of, kind of things. You can only lead so much from, you know, the number two quarterback, right? Yeah. So, you know, McLeod Beth Thompson, he's been a great leader. He's been a great guy, a mentor to all the quarterbacks in that room, um, including Chad Kelly. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to great things within that quarterback room. If yeah. he does go down, I know Chad will be ready to step in. Uh, he's done great in practices. And in that first preseason, his first time live action, he was really hungry. He really wanted it, had some throws. He could, he could, you know, when you watch a film, they're like, okay, you know, you need to dial it back. But the coaches love his eagerness, his aggressiveness, his, his want to, he's got, he's got some dog in him. Right. Mm -hmm. So the guys feed off that when he goes in the game, he's, he's got a spirit about him that, you know, you can't teach. And uh, I think he's got a, he's going to have a bright future. Yeah, McLeod Bethel Thompson, just like Dane Evans, it's it's easy to forget that they've never been the guy at camp. And what that does for a guy's confidence to to not have to look over your shoulder, to not be in constant competition and worrying about every little mistake that might cost you uh, reps that day or a start that week. So very, you know, I hate to compare the Argos and Ticats. It's like comparing <laughs> uh, oranges and apples here, that, uh, but uh, a very similar situation. Speaking of Ticats and Argos, you mentioned to Garrett Davis, but there's also another pretty notable player that uh, decided to uh, take his talents across the QEW. And, you know, there have been great players who have played for both teams, uh, you know, uh, who have had great, you know, success with both teams. Orlando Steiner, of course, is uh, among at the top of the list. Mike Morielli, Chad Owens in more recent history. Does Speedy B have what it takes still? I mean, he's 36. Uh, does he have what it takes to be one of those guys that, that has success in Hamilton and Toronto? I feel like he does. You know, last year wasn't the speedy B we were all used to. And it probably is the reason why he's in Toronto now, right? I know he was dealing with a lot off the field, um, you know, which didn't allow him to be the best on the field. So, you know, this year, you know, you know, hearing his interviews, hearing him talk, he's re he rejuvenated, re-motivated. 
Um, he's, you know, Coach Dinwiddie is speaking glowingly about him, about how he's been able to come in and learn the offense, you know, as fast as anyone he's ever seen, right? So Speedy B is bought into Toronto Argonaut football. Um, you, you know, you talk about the skills, right, that he has. And, you know, last year was tough for, for Hamilton Ticat fans because it, it wasn't what you guys were used to for eight years of him being there. And we've seen a lot of it here in Toronto, and it killed us a lot of years, right? So for us to get a caliber, a player that we know so well, what kind of damage he can do was huge for us. It also takes uh, him from you guys, which is a, <laughs> another bonus. But we're getting him, same as Andrew Harris, at a point where he's motivated. He feels he still has a lot of football left. Uh, and Hamilton, uh, quite honestly, didn't feel like he had that same level of football left. So, you know, the thing about guys that like, like Speedy B who are a, a high level, you know, MOP type players, they don't get to be that those kind of players unless they have that chip on their shoulder at all times. They have that intense pride to want to compete at the highest levels. And he has that right one down here doesn't define him and he's looking to show that he can get back to his MOP ways and you know quite honestly I've seen him kill Toronto kill the league for so many years it's going to be fun to watch him uh a motivated speed to be in you know double blue it'll be so weird but uh so I, I will weird, it'll be so weird I mean I I can't it's it's like pants on a dog. Like I, yeah. it's just like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't make sense. My brain can't comprehend it. Uh, who are you excited to see uh, for the Argos on Friday? And who do you think might need a, a big game or you know, are expecting to see a big game with the motivation with the season just around the corner? You know what, you know, chances are, you know, a lot of the starters will play this game. Uh, coach hasn't said anything about it, but because, you know, week one, the Argos have a bye week. So I expect to see uh, some of the starters, right? So, you know, guys like uh, Shane Ray, who last year, you know, had a, a, a few injuries, but he's come in this year and dominated camp. He was dominating camp last year. But uh, like I said, unfortunately, he suffered injuries. So I'm just looking for him to, you know, show what he, he show the world what he did in camp, right? He had a monster camp. Um, a guy like uh, Winton McManus, right? He's playing alongside Eno Mwamba in that will linebacker role. They've had so much chemistry already in camp, just communicating. They're, you know, two of the more athletic linebackers in the league. Um, so the Toronto, you know, and, you know, that was a spot last year where uh, Cameron, uh, or was Cameron Judge, um, yeah. not Cameron Judge. Yeah. Is Cameron Judge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judge, yeah, Cameron Judge. <laughs> I, I was watching baseball yeah. and I'm confusing with Aaron Judge. Aaron, so yeah, I'm like, wait, yeah, yeah. Judge yeah. was it? Anyway, Cameron Judge, he was supposed to man that spot last year and, and was unfortunately hurt for most of the year. So that's a huge hole that, uh, you know, we have fixed up. Um, also, Royce Mechie, safety. Canadian yeah. safety uh, helps us with the ratio. Uh, a guy that has been super communicative back there uh, is just a, a game changer. So you have, you know, especially on the defense side, that's the side I'm looking for uh, you know, to, yeah. to, to kind of, you know, carry this team while, you know, and then on the offensive side, obviously Speedy B's there, Andrew Harris is there. I don't know how much they're going to play because they're older players and we know, you know, they're paid to perform in the regular season. So, you know, it's all around. It's an exciting team because it feels like the team uh, improved their weaknesses from last season. And, uh, you know, that's that, that that's and you were already a, a East winning team, East division winning team, uh, regular season team. And you improve some weaknesses. So, you know, sky's the limit for this team. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just ready to watch some Argos Ticats football. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It starts Friday. It's the first of five matchups this season. All right. Normally I do. I ask you this question. The Argos will win this game. If <laughs> I don't really care who wins this game, I'm going to be <laughs> honest. I hope it's the Ticats because right. it's, but I mean, it doesn't matter who wins this game. So how about this? The Argos will win the East division. If finish that sentence. Yeah, it's pretty simple. If Nathal Bethel Thompson plays all 17 games, they'll win the East, right? Because if he doesn't, that means he's probably maybe hurt or, or you know, something bad happened, right? So we, if he plays every single game that he's supposed to play, the Argos win, win the East. There's so much talent on this team. Just watching, you know, veterans. I'm like, Andrew Harris is our running back, right? And, you know, a lot of people forget that Curly Gaines Jr., you know, receiver, Canadian receiver, was an all-star last season, right? So he's there. Then you got DeVars Daniels 
Eric Rogers. I'm like, and then Speedy B, yeah. like Speedy B's on this team. And, it's but, just, it's yeah. unreal, man. And so to, to the MCB point, I mean, th- this is a guy who led the league in passing in 2019, right? right? So, I mean, even though we're saying it's, it's his first year as the guy, yeah. I mean, he's put up huge numbers again in comparison to Dane Evans and just that, you know, two guys that are going to be super fun to watch all season long. Then you add in the fact that Ottawa's better. Yeah. Montreal is looking good too. You know, yeah. they're, they're looking to build on last year. They're going to be feeling the pressure this year mm-hmm. with, you know, uh, between uh, Vernon Adams and, uh, and Kahari Jones, they're going to be feeling it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the best part about it is I get to talk to you four more times about the Thai Cats and Argos this season. Nate, I know you're a busy man. So thank you for doing this. Appreciate it. Anytime. I am looking forward to it, man. I love talking football with you, Louis B. Also, before I get out of here, man, I, almost, I just want to say congrats on ah. all your success. You're getting on the TV side, man. You're doing big <laughs> things. And inspiration, Louis B. Keep balling, man. Man, I appreciate it. I'm motivated by you, what you do with your Argos and all that stuff at the 10, or the Argos at the, the Raptors 1052, man. Uh, so as long as you and I can keep pushing each other to be better, uh, you know, it's going to be you and I on that Sports Center desk uh, sooner rather than later. How about that? You already know. Hey, <laughs> look it. We'll, we'll replay Let's this go. interview. We'll yeah, this interview this will, this will there, be, Let's yeah. All right. This has been Speaking with the Enemy. It's the Tigats, Argos, Friday, 7.30 kickoff. RJ Broad and Luke Task. Grab the call, Andy Fantuz, and I get you set at 6.30. On behalf of all of us here at the Ticats Audio Network, I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day.